This segment will define several terms that are relative to displacer and float type level instruments. One term is density. Density is the weight per unit volume of a substance. Density has two dimensions, weight and volume. The density of water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. 62.4 pounds is the weight. A cubic foot is the volume, or you could say the density of water is 0 0.0362 pounds per cubic inch. The expression also gives weight per unit volume. The density of steel is 490 pounds per cubic foot. The density of gasoline is 37.4 pounds per cubic foot. Specific gravity is the ratio of the weight of a given substance to the weight of an equal volume of water. Specific gravity compares the density of water to the density of other materials. At 60 degrees Fahrenheit, the specific gravity of water is 1. The specific gravity of steel is the comparison of the weights of equal volumes of steel and water. Steel is 7.85 times heavier than water. The specific gravity of gasoline is 0 0.6. Specific gravities of liquids are related to a given temperature, usually 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Normally, the specific gravity decreases with a rise in temperature. If the specific gravity of a mass is greater than 1, it will sink in water. If it is less than 1, it will float on water. Ships are made of steel with a specific gravity of 7.85. Why do they float in water with a specific gravity of 1.0? Archimedes' principle explains why. His principle states, a body immersed in a liquid seems to lose weight, and the apparent loss in weight is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. A cubic foot of steel immersed in water would appear to lose 67.4 pounds. This is the weight of the cubic foot of water it displaced. Stating Archimedes' principle a little differently, a body immersed in a liquid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. So for an object to float, it must displace a weight of liquid equal to its entire weight. This cubic foot of wood weighs 15.6 pounds. It floats when it displaces 15.6 pounds of water. How deep will it sink in the water? Fifteen point six pounds is a quarter of the 62.4 pound weight of a cubic foot of water. Therefore, the cubic foot of wood will sink three inches, or one quarter of a foot. So, why does a ship float? Because its weight is considerably less than the weight of the water it displaces. Let's consider another example. We shall take a 3-inch diameter by 14-inch long hollow stainless steel object that weighs 6 pounds and has a volume of approximately 100 cubic inches and calculate its specific gravity. A cubic inch of water weighs 0 0.362 pounds. So 100 cubic inches of water would weigh 3.62 pounds. 
The specific gravity of the 3 inch by 14 inch object would be 6 pounds divided by 3.62 pounds, or 1.66. Will it sink in water? Yes. Its specific gravity equals 1.66. It is heavier than water. Now let's suspend the cylinder from scales. With no liquid above the cylinder, it weighs 6 pounds. If the cylinder is completely submerged, it displaces 100 cubic inches of water, or 3.62 pounds. So it weighs 2.38 pounds. What would the scales indicate if we suspended the displacer in gasoline? which has a specific gravity of 0 0.6. It would still displace 100 cubic inches of the fluid. The cylinder is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of 100 cubic inches of 0 0.6 specific gravity liquid, or a buoyant force of 2.17 pounds. The scales would indicate 6 minus 2.17 pounds, or 3.83 pounds. Now let's consider the buoyant force upon a hollow sphere, which is 1 gallon in volume and weighs 2 pounds. Will it float in water? Yes because one gallon of water weighs 8.33 pounds, and this object weighs only 2 pounds. Since the power to operate the level is proportional to the liquid displaced, the float should be weighted so it operates half submerged. The maximum force is encountered at the maximum cross-sectional area of the object, or in the case of the sphere, half submerged. Let's consider our two-pound, one-gallon volume float. For it to float half-submerged in water, it would have to weigh the equivalent of one-half a gallon of water, or 4.16 pounds. We would have to add 2.16 pounds of weight to make it float half-submerged. Now work exercise one in your workbook. Now let's consider a little more complex problem. We wish to calculate the weight of the one gallon float for 50% submersion in an interface of water and gasoline. float must sink in the gasoline and float in the water. One gallon of gasoline weighs 0 0.6 times 8.33 equals 5 pounds. So, the one gallon float must weigh more than 5 pounds to sink in the gasoline. Since one gallon of water weighs 8.33 pounds, the float must weigh less than 8.33 pounds to float in the water. Therefore, to float in the interface, the float must weigh more than 5 pounds and less than 8.33 pounds. To calculate the weight for 50% submersion in the water, take one half the difference between the two extremes and add the difference to the lesser weight.
6.66 pounds is the correct float weight for the 50% submersion in water. It also satisfies the condition of being more than 5 and less than 8.33 pounds. Let's consider the hollow stainless steel cylinder again. It is precisely what is inside a displacer type level transmitter. Why is the displacer cylindrical? It is cylindrical, so it will have a constant cross-sectional area. This means for each equal unit of submersion, there will be an equal increment of buoyant force. This yields a linear relationship between level and buoyancy. Notice there are no scales to support the displacer. There is, however, an element that does the same thing. It is called a torsional spring, or torque tube. The displacer always pulls down as its weight opposes the torque. And when the displacer is completely submerged in water, it still pulls down opposing the torque. The torque tube twists a specific amount for each increment of buoyancy change. The torque tube is hollow. Inside it there is a rod called the rotary shaft. The rotary shaft is fastened to the inner end of the torque tube and transmits the degree of torque tube rotation to the outside of the vessel. The movement of the displacer due to buoyant force is transmitted outside the vessel as rotary motion proportional to liquid level. There is no packing and no hysteresis since the displacer is always pulling down. More details about the operating principle and construction of a displacer type level will be presented in segment 2.14.2 of this module. Now let's review some of the most important terms defined in this segment. Density, as you recall, is weight per unit volume. An example is a cubic foot of water weighs 62.4 pounds. Specific gravity is relative density. It compares the weight of a given substance to the weight of an equal volume of water. Water, whose specific gravity is 1.0, is the standard used when calculating specific gravities. Buoyancy, or buoyant force, is equal to the weight of the fluid an object displaces. Now work exercise two in your workbook.